What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. There are two things that really need to get done. One, I need a haircut and two, I need to get the interior of the F-150. Guess which one's going to be in today's video? If I said previously, I kind of want to reuse everything that I possibly can in this truck in some form of art or furniture. And one thing that I wanna make sure that we really do is save the interior because this is in relatively good shape for a 92 truck that spent all of its life in Illinois and has been spending a lot of its time in the summer heat of Texas. Not too bad on the fading, the dash isn't cracked. So we're gonna see what we can do. First, we need to get this seat out. All right, so I'm not really exactly sure what that's for. It might be lumbar support because if I flip the switch here, yeah, it looks like we have a hose coming up through the back. So that must be lumbar support. So now we can get to these nuts right here. They look rusted like everything else on this truck. So hopefully they turn. So we can see a lot of rust here around the base. So that might be so rusted out that we just snap out through the floorboard, which I kind of suspected anyway, but uh, let's give it a try. It's not budging. So I did like I did with everything else and I soaked it in PB blaster. So we'll let that sit for now. We'll go ahead and we'll start working on pulling out the door cards. Looks like we have a Phillips head screw here. Um, probably some along the edge. No, oh, one up here and some here along the bottom. So we'll start getting those things out. Taking off the door card, as you can see, pretty bare. I started disconnecting everything that I could. I am gonna be saving this so I can reuse that for my piece on the door. Uh, here, this went down in here somewhere. Don't really know what it went to. We got uh, the stuff for the speaker. That was pretty easy, just four screws there. We have all of this disconnected and ready to slide out through the door. If you look right here, this is pretty torn up. It looks like somebody took a pair of tin snips to it. I would assume at some point in time, that motor went out and needed to be replaced. And I don't know if it was my grandpa or who, quite possibly my grandpa, uh, just kind of tore that up so they get the motor in and out. But uh, now we're gonna start moving on to the interior trim pieces. Like here, the A pillar, you can see there's a few screws that go up and around here. And then we're gonna start moving on back here towards the back side, which we have one, two, through here, and then a couple they go across here to the other side while we're waiting for the PB blaster to do its job down there with the seats. I'm gonna attempt to get our seatbelt out, which is attached here with what appears to be a T47. The trim panel goes underneath this piece right here. And if you look, those are very badly rusted. So we're just gonna have to snap that out, which we, means we may end up breaking that. Oof, another really bad piece of rust right there in the door jam. I now have the majority of the trim panels out around the back cabin of the truck. Now we're gonna go on here to removing this back carpet. It looks like it's just four push pins in here or fir tree pins. So I'm gonna go through and remove all of those and get this back carpet out. With the rear carpet out now, I'm probably gonna move on to removing the headliner. So to get the headliner out, you have to remove your sun visors, which is three screws right over here. There's one screw on the back side of your anchor port on the other side and same over on that side. Then we need to come up in here and remove this rear light. That way we can go ahead and take this down. Removing that panel right there shows us that we got, uh, looks like three screws in here. I'm gonna assume all three of them hold them in place, but I'm not really sure, but uh, we'll go through and remove all three and bring this down. The headliner is now safely removed. As we look out here, it came out pretty good don't have too many creases in it nothing in the major part there are some holes in it right here i uh, don't know if there's anything else that appears wrong with it but it looks like it's a cardboard back huh interesting up along top you can see that we have some i want to say those are 10 millimeters along the top 
We have two up here on the driver's side and two over there on the passenger side to be able to remove this. I'm gonna start with the bottom first. The bottom section of that tray is held in with two of these hex screws, which on this truck was a T15. Remove those two. We now have this out of the way and our fuse cover comes with it. Looking here under the dash, we have three. Let's see, one, two, the third one back there, 15 millimeter bolts. Then we can pull this all out in one big chute. Also, we're gonna have to remove the one bolt there that holds the steering column up into the steering shaft. So let's see if we can remove those and take the dash out all as one piece. To get to our final bolts back here, we had to remove our e-brake and also our hood release latch. Those were attached on this truck with three 13 millimeter bolts. You can see them right here, kind of in that triangle pattern. So now we can get back in here and finish take out these. Here underneath the dash, we have these little bars here that connect the bottom of the dash to the cabin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen these. They appear to be an eighth, but I've been wrong with a lot of stuff. We got this one here, and then we have another one over here we're gonna need to loosen. I released my final bolt of the four 15 millimeter bolts that were down there, and this whole thing has come leaning forward. Uh, I think right now the only thing holding it up is, yeah, it looks like the steering column. But once I pull forward on this, it'll pop free because I have removed that one bolt holding it in place. On the back side here, we can see our two harness looms that go inside. Both of them are attached here to the firewall with the 10 millimeter socket. So we're gonna get those off so we can pull it through onto the other side. With the wires themselves removed, all we have to do is push in these little plastic tabs on the top and the bottom, which hold these in place. And we should be able to slide these through the firewall, no problem. Connected to a little rocker here is something. I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, it goes down in through here, but I do have to remove it so we can pull the dash out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it on through. Had a couple items from the harness still connected in. Had to get rid of those. Um, it's plastic. I mean, this is over 20 years old, so it's pretty brittle. Stuff started breaking. So I'm trying to get out as much as I can, keep it intact, because I don't know what I'm going to need to use when I switch this engine over to something else. Over in the center, we had some looms that needed to be released. Over here, we also had what appears to be three different harnesses that needed to be removed, as well as what went up here, I think, for the door speakers. And we have one little ground in here that's uh, not a 10 millimeter, probably an eight. Well, there she is. The dash is out. One last thing that I had to take care of that you didn't see. So over there, we have this line here that went out. Um, I believe it was for the air conditioning and whatnot. Same with over here to change the flaps or open and close the flaps. Had to remove that and then it came out. Whew. I'm definitely a little winded. If you choose to do it like this, the way I did where you bring the whole thing out with that big metal bar, get some help. This hangs heavy as shit. Finishing up some of the interior stuff, we're gonna move on to the gas pedal, which is removed by taking out these three 13 millimeter bolts, then sliding the cable out through this top notch. Next, we remove the brake pedal by removing these four 15 millimeter nuts. I'm also gonna remove this cotter pin here that connects the brake pedal to the brake booster. That way we get a little bit more freedom here in our pedal. And since for me, there seemed to be a bit of a clearance issue, I'm gonna go ahead and use my 18 and 15 millimeter wrenches to remove the entire brake pedal to allow us to get a deep well socket back here onto this final 15. And since it seems like the truck likes to hide a lot of stuff from me, there's two more 10 millimeter bolts right here along the top that hold this bracket in place. After a whole night of soaking with the PB Blaster, we were able to get one of the studs out on the other side. This is not the way it's supposed to come out, but it came out. And then the other one, yeah, it snapped off, but again, we don't need it. So we're able to now remove the seat. For final removal of the seat, we need to make sure that we've taken care of our plugs for our lumbar support, as well as remove the seat belts from down here at the base so they can slide out through the holes here. Thanks, Gabs. Welcome back to the videos. <laughs> Goodbye for another year. <laughs> With the seat out, all we have to do now is remove the last of our seat belts. Now we can remove the padding at the front of the dash as well as our air box. I'm really not concerned about the contender that's left in here because that is metal. We're going to be taking that to the yard with us and the remainder of it is attached on the inside of the engine bay. So now the last thing for us to do is remove the carpet. Now with the carpet removed, we can see a lot better some of the rust that we have going on here. It eats through here, through the door jam, 
all the way up in through here around to the back. It's starting to eat through here at this seam. Some of it, as you can see, when I push down on the sound deadening, the sound deadening is the only thing holding that section of floor together. While the passenger side jams have held up a little bit better, you still can see here along the edge of the seam where it's starting to go through. And then up here, it's another situation where the only thing that's holding this together is the sound deadening. And this is where we're gonna leave it for today's episode, messy hair and all. As you can see, we got a lot done here on the interior. So the next thing that we're gonna be doing is removing the cab itself off of the frame. Now I do have a couple ideas as to what we're gonna do with both the parts and building and also where this engine's gonna go. But you're gonna have to stay tuned to see all of that stuff. If you guys liked what you saw today, please give this video a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you like what we're doing. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of the stuff that we got coming up. Until the next one, peace.